Uh, my name is Diana Gomez. I will start the last day of talk of the annual international conference to brain inspired cognitive architecture for artificial intelligence. Uh, I will be the chairman during this presentation block. We shall start with Anastasia Piven's presentation. Anastasia, are you ready to share your screen? Uh, hello, I, I'm going to be sharing the screen with Senia. I'm with Anastasia. We have talked about, uh, we sent an email that I'm going to be the presenter. But I'm ready to share the screen. Can I? No se escucha. A mí se me quiere la chica. No sé qué soy el detenido. Ya está todo. Ok. Anastasia, can you share your screen, please? Yes. You have 50 minutes to present your work and um, followed by five minutes of the question from the audience. Anastasia, uh, you can start, please. Uh, yes. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Xenia. I'm going to be presenting the research that we made with Anastasia Piva and Jan, uh, Professor Jan Troer on the base of uh, Free University in Amsterdam. And the topic of our research is an adaptive network model for aggregation and prion like propagation of alpha synuclein in Parkinson's disease. Um, so Parkinson's disease is considered to be synuclinopathy. It's one of the main neurodegenerative diseases, which is defined by the loss of the pathogenic producing neurons in the region of brain called substantia nigra. Um, uh, so the Parkinson's disease is unspecifically characterized by symptoms such as bradykinesia, rigidity, and resonant tremor. And the protein uh, called alpha-synuclein is thought to play the key role in the development of this disease. So we have protein uh, monomers of alpha-synuclein which are normally present in brains, but in some cases they... Um, gain an abnormal formation and leading themselves as a prions, which means that one specific monomer or uh, oligomer might cause the other proteins, normal proteins present in brain to um, uh, gain an abnormal conformation, what leads to formation of Lewy bodies and uh, therefore the loss of neurons and brain damage. Um, but along with alpha-synuclein, a uh, growing evidence exists that lipids uh, with alpha-synuclein play a role in the development of neurodegeneration. And what's going on is lipids and uh, alpha-synuclein, they aggregate together, whereas in just simple aggregates or clusters of alpha-synuclein and lipid vesicles leads to alpha synuclein slash lipid uh, discomastasis. And a few mutations in specific genes were found to possibly play a role in the um, development of this abnormal formation of lipids and alpha synuclein. And so after the aggregation of uh, alpha synuclein with lipids uh, exist, uh, the, uh, four postulated ways of further propagation of alpha synuclein in brain might take place. So the first one might be through synapses or synapse-like structures through nanotubes, which is uh, basically bonds, uh, so connection between one cell and another, uh, incorporation by simple uh, endocytosis and exocytosis, so vesicle inside or attached with, uh, to alpha synuclein leaves one cell and goes into the another, and uh, also through receptor mediated uh, uptake. And so, based on the background information, we've created the conceptual model for our uh, network. So we start off with the mutation in enzyme uh, in enzymes that are responsible for lipids present uh, in and uh, mutation in alpha synuclein responsible gene, uh, genes present 
So the first box here, which is for enzymes, uh, leads to enzymes regulation and leads to lipid uh, dyshomeostasis. And the same holds for alpha synuclein, leads to alpha synuclein homeostasis. And at this stage, uh, different risk factors might intervene or make it worse. Uh, and so this homeostasis of alpha synuclein and lipids leads to alpha synuclein gaining toxicity, uh, which leads to further seed formation, meaning this um, seeds of alpha synuclein with lipids might uh, leave the cell and um, uh, through the propagation ways I've talked about, and the aggregation itself would also lead to seed formation. And so at this point, different protective factors might possibly intervene, which we don't know uh, exactly uh, how they do this and what exact protective factors might exist. A bunch of studies have shown that some interesting protective factors might exist. For example, smoking or coffee consumption or ibuprofen consumption might play a role as a protective factor in neurodegeneration development. And some risk factors uh, such as uh, infections uh, or diary consumption, as well as uh, metabolomic syndrome and as well as different medical conditions. So after the seeds were formed, four uh, our postulated ways of propagation take place, synapses, receptor-mediated uptake propagation through nanotubes and exocytosis and endocytosis. And together they are collecting to the alpha-synuclein general level of spreading in brain with leads to neurodegeneration. So now you can see the 3D model of uh, for our simulation and on the base level, you can see the conceptual model uh, and you can see also two uh, higher levels. Uh, second adaptive level has four uh, V states. Let's see what uh, they mean. For example, lipid homeostasis leads to alpha synuclein toxicity, but both they, the more uh, lipid homeostasis uh, uh, dysfunction we have, the more alpha synuclein toxicity we have, and they both gonna result in more alpha synuclein toxicity. The same holds for alpha uh, homeostasis uh, dysfunction and alpha uh, synuclein gaining toxicity. The more alpha synuclein, uh, alpha synuclein dysregulation we have, the more alpha synuclein toxicity we have, but they both are going to result in more, uh, in more alpha synuclein toxicity itself, and it holds for every V state we have. Mm. For example, ag uh, aggregation and seed formation, more seed formation as a result, and of course, uh, alpha the general level of alpha synuclein spreading in brain and neurodegeneration. And on the third level, you can see four V states, uh, V states which stand for speed factors for each of the V states we have respectively. So now going to the cases to the simulation itself. So we've created two simulations for two different cases. And so the first scenario is when we have mutation in genes of alpha synuclein and enzymes responsible for lipids. And so these mutations are present and we have uh, as well protection factors, but they are not sufficient to do anything with the, the start. So with the start of neurodegeneration. So you can see the simulation here. Uh, one by one, these lines going up represent the start of neurodegenerative process. Uh, four horizontal lines over here uh, stand for different ways of propagation of alpha synuclein because the recent studies have shown that uh, the different methods of uh, spreading of alpha synuclein in the brain, they have different levels and they are responsible for different fractions of general level of alpha synuclein. Uh, for example, the uh, one that is thought to be the least important is simple exocytosis and endocytosis line over here. And the most important one is thought to be receptor mediated, which you can see up top over there. And so the uh, level of aggregation stays the same after it has been uh, put to the maximum. It can, it can be in specific cells. And the repetitive lines over here, uh, these are graphs created with step mode to represent uh, risk factors and protection factors. Let's look closer to this simulation here. What we can see is when risk factors drop, the level of uh, lipid homeostasis uh, disorder and alpha synuclein homeostasis disorder also drops just a bit. Um, 
what means that when risk factors are not present at the same high level and neurodegeneration is already uh, present in brain, lipid homeostasis and alpha-synuclein homeostasis might be slightly better uh, than it was before with the risk factors, but it's not sufficient for neurodegeneration, with a, uh, which is an orange line over here, to change just a bit in any side. And protection factors, which is a blue line over here, they might overlap with risk factors. And you can see that when protective factors drop, they are not present. The level of alpha synuclein homeostasis uh, uh, and lipid homeostasis disorder slightly goes up. And you can see that by the absolute values, of this uh, growth or drop, you can see that the drop when risk factors are not present, it's more in absolute value than the uh, growth in protection factors drop, meaning that risk factors play a more significant role and they uh, intervene in higher levels than protection factors when we have neurodegeneration present in brain. And of course, when these both things are present, we cannot reverse neurodegeneration. That's why it continuously stays at the same level. Now moving on to the second case, uh, the scenario is that mutation uh, for alpha synuclein genes and enzyme genes are still present, but protection factors are predicting an older age of onset. And you can see the simulation here. So the lines for the spreading, they are the same, but neurodegeneration, the last orange line we had, is growing slower. It means that neurodegeneration is still existing in brain, but it predicts an older age of onset. But it's hard to tell how much older because the patients with uh, gaining Parkinson's disease, they are already old. So the difference between either it was because of protection factors or because of risk factors uh, going up or down is hard to tell uh, between this one or either the previous case, but we had uh, less protection factors or it was just a case with a person that it was already too bad for them or too good. So it's hard to tell either this neurodegeneration going slowly of how much of older, uh, of older onset we can talk about. And so in conclusion, we have a model now that unifies the process of, of aggregation and further uh, possible propagation pathways of alpha-synuclein. And the main focus was on alpha-synuclein and lipids, which is a hot topic right now in neurodegeneration and Parkinson's disease, and how homeostasis of alpha-synuclein and lipids can be altered by different risk or protective factors. And uh, the received patterns present uh, different ways of how risk and protective factors can play roles in neurodegeneration, although we still don't know the exact patterns and that could be a topic for future research. Thank you very much for attention. Uh, Anastasia, Anastasia, thank you so much. Now we will proceed with a question from the audience. If any has any question, please raise your hand. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any hand raised. So thank you so much, Anastasia, for your presentation. Thank uh, we you. Will...